Morning folks. Well here we are, the early days of spring and the pollinator patch is bursting at the seams. As usual, I've crammed everything in. You wouldn't believe on three acres I don't have the space, but it's wallaby proofed up to now here. So this is really the only guaranteed planting space I have. But anyway, here we go and have a little look. All the roses have started to come along. And there's the odd bud or two. In fact, I realised last year, for some inexplicable reason, I forgot to feed them in their pots and I wondered why they weren't doing so well. Duh! And we've got uh, pomegranate here. And we've got Italian parsley and some peppermint some, I forget how they are, sweet marjoram, whoops, sweet marjoram and chocolate mint and in here apple mint. They're basically, I'm growing apple mint for when I pick flowers. It appears to be the best mint as a filler. More of last season's roses. And the ones in the black pots are this year's burr rooted roses. I've got single um, dahlias from last year under here, which I grew from seed. We'll just see if they pop up again. When I received this rose, Claire Austin. I actually contacted the seller as it was very skinny and, and I thought, oh, that's a first year rose, that shouldn't have come out, but it's, she's doing very well now. And my favourite, Jude the Obscure. More single dahlias, hopefully in bed and doing well under there. red valerian here which this is the first year that it actually is looking strong some borage all sorts of bits and pieces in here straw flowers salvia amistad Sorry. i've got the sun now but um as you see, it's bursting at the seams. But I'm sure I managed to squeeze in a few other bits and pieces. Some of the verbena. Again, it's all the stark. There's um, nothing flowering as such. Some borage has popped in here. Some rose camping all along here. Not sure what you can see at the sun. More roses here that I rescued from the garden. The ones that the wallabies hadn't eaten. So I pulled them up and potted them up and they're doing all right. Lots of foxgloves in here. Lamb's ears. And a foxglove. I think these are my um, elephant garlic, I think. Foxgloves and borage. And a little rose over there. Some borage, some parsley in a pot. And this is my quince. It's starting to 
got up. I've got some um, mixed basil seeds in there and some rocket in here. Now this bit, I've, I've put a whole lot of sunflower seeds in, but I'm not sure if they'll um, grow as they were older. But as I had them, I thought I'll shove them in and see what happens. I've also planted stuff in here, but I can't remember. Hopeless. There's another rose. And I never remember this little tree. I think it's winterberry, but I could be wrong. It's got purple berries. Every time I forget what it is, but it's got beautiful um, dark purple berries in winter. There's some, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Achillea and Achillea there, there it's the gold one, artichoke, I think that's a rather healthy foxglove, it's obviously overfed by the green leaves. So that's the pollinator patch early spring. This is one of the larger raised beds that I ended up having to net as the critters went through it and demolished what was there. But the, the aquilegias are coming back and I've got some verbena. If you can see it with the sun, I seem to have more sun than pictures. You just don't know when it's safe to take the nettings off. I had a disaster in the other netted bed. When I'll show you when I get there. But <clears throat> this one's doing all right so far. But I've just taken the netting off for the, this morning. this time of day to actually film but these are my lilliums that I dug out of the ground and put in pots to take with us when and if but they are doing very well now hopefully the critters don't pass by and eat them you just never know and here's the orchard these are the apple trees and this is down we've got the oranges which we're using at the moment and things are budding up these are the kiwi fruit and I think that's a plum tree which is just about finished flowering and these ones down here are the pear trees and I'll just swing round these are the two water tanks that used to water the garden I think there are 23 and a half thousand litres in each or 25 I can't remember but then we walk round here and we have the citrus trees, the lemons 
and here are the poor olive trees that have been eaten even despite the netting round them by the wallabies. Aloe vera is here just from cuttings and there's the row of bargain basement lavender I bought a couple of years ago well a couple of sea summers ago rather than years but they're doing very well and again the wallabies don't eat the lavender which is great and here's what was to be a rose and herb bed but we all know what happened to the roses these are the euphorbias another little olive tree that was eaten a little pot with daffodils and rose campion in it that's my birthday seat and another little pot which always has gets snacked on so I swing round I've put a couple of um, china asters grown from seed but and I think I had one over here and there was there was two over here but one has been eaten and under the baskets are Russell lupins I'm not sure how they'll come along but I got drew them from seed so we'll just see look some sort of I still haven't managed to identify this tree There didn't seem to be any fruits so far on it, so I have no idea what it is. And, uh, I have um, fed these lemon trees, but we'll see if they green up again. They're, I'd imagine they're fairly old, but the lemons are still good. And uh, let me think, I think this is, yes, this is a cherry tree. Oops. These are the two tanks which are designated for fire. Well, all the tanks if there was a fire, but these two are the main ones for the fire. The back two can be used for the garden. And the one down at the near the gate is the one where we pump up water to the top two garden tanks. And if they're the overflow goes into these two, but they're chock a block, so we don't have any overflow, which is good. Hopefully, I'm going to have enough rain. We have sorted out our leak that we didn't know. We didn't know why the tanks weren't filling, but we found that out and fixed it so now we've got operating tanks which are great which is great